Hey Pyro, when you are first starting out, it is so frustrating. You get a wood burning tool, you get some wood, and you just like bust out this whole project and you hate it. You have a miserable experience. That is so frustrating. I totally did the same thing. And I wanna show you in this video, the seven things I wish I'd known as a beginner that would have really helped me to have a much better experience wood burning. Number one, there are two basic different kinds of burners. One is a solid point like this, where it looks like a soldering iron, because it is. And it's got a little tip on there that is made of solid metal. I think it's brass. And then you have the wire nib machines. See that one? See how it's a wire? These are more professional. These are so much easier to use, but they're also more expensive. So th those two are very, very different kinds of machines. This one's going to be a lot easier, but it's going to be more expensive. This one's going to be budget friendly, but it's gonna take you a lot more time to get the kind of burns that you want. Now, this type of burner does not have any kind of heat control at all. These are the hardest ones to use because you have to control your speed, how fast or slowly you burn because that's how dark or light or that's how you make it dark or light is by burning slower or faster. The other thing you have to really control is your technique. So these are actually, even though they're the cheapest and they are um, what most beginners start out with, these are the hardest ones to use. The next step up is a solid point that has heat control. You can get one like this. You see that? Or you can get one like this. See that? And this one has heat control on it and this one has heat control on it. And so these are definitely a step up. You definitely want heat control. It's so much easier to burn nice and slowly and get to know the machine and understand the wood and practice your techniques if you can turn the heat down and move a little bit slower. If you can't turn that heat down, it's hard, okay? So those are some things to keep in mind when you're looking at a tool. And with the wire nib machines, you get typically a lot more uh, different kinds of nibs and tips to work with. And they heat up really fast and they cool off really fast. So uh, instead of waiting, you know, five minutes for this to heat up and five or 10 minutes for it to cool down, you are waiting mm, three to five seconds for this to heat up and generally three to five seconds for it to cool down unless you have one of those that has been welded on and then it's closer to like 30 seconds or 60 seconds. So the first thing is to choose a burner that's going to actually help you get the burns that you want. Choose a burner that you're going to enjoy. If you've never tried wood burning before, I would definitely recommend getting one of those cheaper solid point burners. But if you know you love it and you want to go all in, I highly recommend getting a wire nib machine because it is so much more satisfying, it is so much faster, and you have less worry to do. You can just enjoy burning so much more. That was my experience. The second thing I wish I'd known is that you should choose the best wood and prep it because it's going to make burning so much easier, so much faster. When I switched from burning pine to burning basswood, it cut my time in half. Literally, that's the only change I made. It was amazing. I was, <laughs> I was blown away. So it really, really makes a huge difference. What you want is light color, smooth grain, and you want to make sure that it's not toxic. <laughs> it's not poisonous or anything like that. There are lots of other things too. I'm actually doing a video on that. So be watching for that. And then of course, once you have chosen the wood, sand it. I used to skip that because I was like, sanding, Pff, I don't need sanding. That's so lame. And then I realized sanding actually makes you go faster. I like to go faster. So I sand it now <laughs> and I usually use around a 220 grit. You can sand it finer and that's really, really satisfying to burn when you have a nice polished wood, but it doesn't tend to take uh, sealants very well. So that's why I typically don't go above a 220, but it's really okay if you do. And if you only have 150 grit, that's okay too. I just wouldn't recommend something like an 80 grit or a 50 grit. That can be too rough and that can leave marks on the wood. You definitely want to, um, you definitely want to sand it with a finer sandpaper before you start burning. Okay, the third thing that I wish I'd known was how to prep and like transfer my design onto the wood. You can do it a couple of different ways. You can use a pattern and transfer it, or you can sketch it on the wood yourself. Now, what I didn't know 
was that pencil marks were so abhorrently hard to erase off of wood. I mean, it's just terrible. It just kind of swallows up all that graphite. And so what I have discovered is you have to draw very lightly. I actually use like a 4-H pencil, one of those um, art pencils that's like the, the lead itself is harder. And so I'll use that to make a really light sketch. And then I will use a sand eraser to get that off of the wood. It's so much better that way. <laughs> and I can put links down in the description for you so that it's easy for you to find all the stuff that I'm talking about. If you're not sketching it onto the wood directly, then you'll probably be using a pattern. And patterns also have their own nuances, like how to transfer it. What you want to do is find a way that does not include chemicals, if you can help it, to transfer your pattern to the wood. I actually have an entire video on how to transfer patterns in ways that are safe for pyrography because there were some people transferring things with Mod Podge and then burning over it. Guys, don't burn Mod Podge. Don't burn glue. Don't burn it. <laughs> don't do it. So watch the little video on um, that I've got for you on how to transfer patterns to wood safely for pyrography. The fourth thing that I wish I had known when I started wood burning was that you might want some safety gear. <laughs> it doesn't have to be massive, but guys, we're burning stuff. Like, that's smoky, you know? And at first I thought, well, how dangerous could this be, really? And now that I'm into it, I've had friends who have actually put themselves in the hospital. So. Don't do that, okay? Take care of yourself, respect your body, respect yourself more than that. So the first thing I would recommend is getting a desktop fan. If you can, get a carbon filter fan because that actually filters out the smoke. But if you can't get one of those, just a desk fan, but turn it away from you so that instead of blowing in your face or blowing on the nib and cooling off all the burning that you're doing, turn it around. And what happens is it pulls the air from what you're working on, pulls the smoke in through the fan and out and away from you. It's fantastic. I had no idea that was a thing and that was huge. I also tend to burn for long periods of time and when I do that, my fingers get hot. So, uh, well, really the burner gets hot and then it's hot on my fingers. So I have a couple of different things. First of all, you can get a table that tilts up and that will help to tilt the smoke between the wood and your fingers instead of going directly up into your fingers. So that's helpful. Another thing is to get some finger guards or finger heat shields. You can use some from uh, salon workers. They'll use it for hair dryers or whatever. They have them for just like three fingers. You can get crafting ones that um, you can use when you're doing glue guns, using a glue gun. You can get leather gloves. That was my favorite for a while because actually sometimes my hand gets shaky when I've been burning for a long period of time. And those gloves actually help to steady the shake which I found very fascinating. <laughs> so sometimes I burn with gloves if I'm just shaky. And it helped a lot with the heat. I also have a thermal finger, finger guard that I put inside of the glove, and that really helps to protect the finger that gets the most heat. Oh, and of course, keep windows open, use fans, use ventilation, burn outside. It's actually quite lovely in the summertime when you can do that. Right now, it's wintertime, and so I'm burning inside because it's cold. Now the fifth thing that I wish I had known when I started wood burning was some little tips and tricks to help me get going. So I'm gonna share those with you because this was huge for me. First of all, start light, low, and slow. Something I tell my students if you're in my learn and burn course or if you're in my shading course is I tell you to go light, low, and slow. You wanna start with light pressure. Actually, you always wanna have light pressure forever and ever, amen. And then low heat. You start with low heat because that helps you to be able to move at a pace you're comfortable with and move slowly. Don't be in a rush. You wanna make sure that you're moving slow enough to really get the hang of using your burner on wood because it is an entirely different game from like, putting a pencil on paper or from using a paintbrush on a canvas. It's very, very different. And so you want to take the time to really get to know it. The next tip I would say is don't muscle it. Imagine that you have a lighter and imagine that you have a log, okay? If you try to take the lighter and light this log, it's gonna take a while, right? But if you try to push that lighter into the log, it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna make it darker. It might gouge the wood. It might damage your lighter. <laughs> it's the same thing with pyrography. When you have that wood, you can't press harder. It's not going to do anything but gouge the wood and probably damage your burner. The best thing you can do is crank up your heat or go slower. Don't muscle it, relax. When you're in the beginning, please go slow. 
as you gain experience, you can turn that heat up like I do, crank it up nice and high, and move at the pace that you're comfortable with. Go as fast or as slowly as you'd like. But in the beginning, take it easy on yourself. Light, low, and slow, and don't muzzle it. And the next thing I would tell you is that there are levels to pyrography, okay? At the very basic, natural lines are the easiest. So like branches of trees or flower petals, those are very forgiving, okay? Because they have lots of natural lines. Once you start getting into lettering, geometrics, architecture, things like that, that gets a little bit harder because getting a straight line or a perfect circle can be really tricky when you're burning because wood has a personality of its own, okay? Heat has a personality of its own. And you have to really get to know those before you can really start to have um, those straight lines and those beautiful curves that you want, those clean lines. So start with natural lines, then move up to lettering and, and geometrics and architecture and things like that, okay? And then shading, okay? I made the mistake of starting out trying to shade and everything looked like it had big black pock marks all over it because I didn't know how to shade. And so it was really splotchy, really, really bad. And I, I learned that, okay, I need to back this up. I need to start with line art, you know? And as kids, when you're learning to use a pencil, you don't just jump right in and say, I'm going to draw like Michelangelo would draw with a pencil. No, you start with a flower. You start with a stick figure. You start with these very, very basic things, right? Before you even start with lettering. Okay, so it's natural lines and then it's lettering and straight lines. Then you can start getting into shading and all of those other things. Those are harder, but they are tons of fun and you can still do it. You just gotta get your technique down. Speaking of, I do have a video that's all about techniques for beginners so that you guys can get a foundation so you can start getting the burns that you want. You can start getting those clean, crisp lines that you've been craving, okay? And I'm gonna put that link here in the video for you too. And if any of this has been helpful so far, just hit that like button real quick. And with all these videos coming out, you might just wanna subscribe because then you won't miss the videos as they come out. So get to that. The sixth thing that I wish I had known when I started out is when to add mixed media. So if you want to add watercolor or you want to add acrylic or even like like paper and you want to glue things on and make it a real a real mixed media piece, that's fantastic. Do it after you burn, okay? <laughs> Do not do it beforehand. The rule of thumb is if you wouldn't burn it by itself, if you wouldn't burn it separately, don't burn it on your art. So would you burn watercolor? No, so do it after. Would you burn a stain, uh, like a, a wood stain? No, do it after. Would you burn um, gold foil, gold leaf, any of that kind of stuff? No, you wouldn't burn any of that. Don't put it on there until after your burn is finished, okay? And I would also say burn both sides. So if you're gonna like add a signature on the back or you're going to put a, a brand on the back, I use a branding iron on the back. If you seal it first or do your mixed media or whatever, sometimes it makes the stuff, the finish or the glues and paints bubble. It makes them bubble. Do all of your burning first, then add your paints then add your colored pencils, then add your glues and your colors and all the other odds and ends that you wanna be adding, if you're going to add it. The seventh thing that I wish I'd known was how to seal it. There are some pretty crazy things out there that like, like I didn't realize that certain finishes would actually make colored pencil melt. I didn't know. There are certain finishes that will actually make your wood burning piece look cloudy. So if you use it, it's no good. You gotta use the right kind of sealant, but do that after you have done the burning, after you've added the mixed media, then it is time to add your sealant. Typically when I'm just doing wood burning, I like to use a polycrylic. Polycrylic is, it doesn't yellow over time. It's a crystal clear finish, so it just makes the wood look wet. That's all it does, and I love it. And so I typically use a satin finish. Some people really love a gloss finish. You can also use a matte finish um, for the polycrylic. There are other, like, don't ever use a spray paint matte finish. That's bad. If you're doing a food safe thing, such as like a cutting board or you're making coasters or you're making something that you wanna put food on. I guess you don't put food on coasters. Anyway, I like to use a food safe finish like a butcher block oil and then a butcher block conditioner. I actually make my own, but you can buy these anywhere. Odie's oil is also really fantastic and I'll put links to all of this 
down below. I also have an article on my website with a lot of finishes that you can use depending on what kind of uh, mixed media that you used or the purpose it has, whether it's going outdoor or indoor or food safe or blah, blah, blah. So if you're interested in that, I will put that link in the description. I'm also going to make it a video. And when that comes up, I'll put that here for your big, beautiful eyes to watch. Now, if you want to seriously level up your pyrography game, you're going to want to watch this video next. And there is so much more pyrography goodness coming your way. You do not want to miss it. Later, Pyro. This sounds urgent. That way. <laughs> yes! Lab. Hmm.